This is the word of God's grace brought to you by the Standing Church International. We're a life-transforming church with a vision of raising a supernatural army for the Lord. Get ready to be blessed by God's word and experience miracles. Praise God. Father, we thank you this day. Thank you for the presentation, Success for Academic Excellence, that we started in the previous message. Father, we give you praise and glory. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. As we go forward again into today, let your power rest upon your people. Let there be miracles. Lift them. Change their lives. Let there be healings. Let there be transformations. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. In the last message, we began to look at presentation, success for academic excellence, and we spoke about the answer of peace. Presentation success has to do with what happens to you when you have gotten to the spotlight of answer provision and question solving in any academic pursuit. Glory to God. And last week, we learned how that many people prepare for exams, but they, don't, they never write the correct thing, even though they know the correct thing. They will not write it in the correct way. They don't have the answer of peace. And they keep looking like people who never prepared for exams. So today, we are going to be dealing with another type of problem from God's word. And so the message is titled, Solving Presentation Skill Problems for Exam Success. Solving Presentation Skill Problems for Examination Success. Exodus chapter 4 another set of cocktail of scriptures from verse 10 to 12 and Moses said unto the Lord oh my Lord I'm not eloquent neither yet of all nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant but I am slow of speech glory to God and of a slow tongue and the Lord said unto him who hath made man's mouth or who maketh the dumb or deaf or the seen or the blind have not I the Lord go I will be with your mouth and teach you what you will say. Luke chapter 21, verse 13 to 15. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Acts chapter 6, verse 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Who in his own self bear our sins in his own body. Amen. On the tree. That we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed. There are many people, many times, who have crossed the problem of having the answer of peace. They already know how they will answer their questions. They already know what is expected of them. They are well prepared for the exams, but still they don't do well. They read. They join study groups. They ask questions in class. Everybody knows them. They pray very devoted and committed in church. They sow their seeds yet they don't get to do well. Some of them have become angry because they expect God to undertake their task for them. If I was doing all these things, why didn't you do anything for me? You know, you should have done something for me. No, relax. But when some of them were quite settled down and analyze why, some of them will tell you truthfully, I studied, but I have a bad handwriting. People have always complained about my handwriting. And it has always set me back in exams. I think I'm suffering from dyslexia. Today, that thing will be broke. <laughs> I read truly, but when I stand to present, I study, I prepare. When I stand to present, I just forget what I want to present. The other day, I stood out to present before people. I just realized I couldn't present boldly. I was shaking. These are the things that make people score down, despite having the answers of peace. These problems have set many people back. And in the name of Jesus, today, it is broken. It's broken in your life. 
Moses' story shows that God can help us with every issue that is associated with presentation. Moses, he had 10 presentations upcoming. <laughs> and he needed to pass, the, in fact, more than 10, 12, because he asked to go and present to the Israelites before he goes to Judah. And all these presentations, he needed to pass them one after the other. Now he has a problem in his hand. He can't even pass one. How will he pass the 11 in front of him? He's trying to bargain with God. I don't want to go for this exam. You wake up in the morning, you say, I've read, but Lord, if we can just postpone this exam. They don't need to postpone it. It's presentation titles you are having, the inflammation of presentation. <laughs> and God is healing in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Haven't you met people who say, let this exam just come. So I can go and rest. They are ready. They know. So let it just come. Let's just write what we want to write and go. Say, so, uh, uh, are you going to tell you? It will be all right. <laughs> But you say, ah, for me, <laughs> let them just give us one more week. You don't need to be asking for one more week every time. And one of the primary ways God helps us like he did for Moses is with his word <laughs> and his anointing. And that's what is happening. That's what is coming to you this day. And in the name of Jesus, God's word is lighting on your problem. God's word is lighting on your problem. <laughs> These presentation skill problems you have been facing, they end now. <laughs> what do you need to solve these problems? What do you need to solve presentation skill problems so that you can have outstanding success? Number one, the right image of yourself. Knowing this stuff for exam, it's just like maybe one fifth of what a person needs to pass an exam. There are many other things that helps people pass exams beyond just knowing the right answers. And one of those things is the right image of yourself. Your image of yourself within must be changed to that of success. Because it says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life, the boundaries of life. If you be set free from presentation skill problems, you must have the right image of yourself. All these previous pictures of when you flunked badly must be replaced with you doing well. All these pictures that come to you of when you did terribly, it must be replaced. You must see yourself standing in front of the crowd and everybody clapping for you. That image must be changed from within. And in the name of Jesus, I command every force that has held your mind bound to be destroyed. There are many people, the spirit of shame has held them back because of previous failures. They wrote the exam, they failed. They went for Viva, they couldn't face the people, they failed. <laughs> Let me make you laugh. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> when I wrote one of my exams, <laughs> In fact, that was the first test that I passed. All true. When I went for the interview, the oral interview, the viva, <laughs> do you know what they asked me? <laughs> what was your score in jam? <laughs> That's an embarrassment. I thought they said this your set is one of the brilliant sets. That's what they were asking me. I knew those things. I had read those things. I forgot. You know you are in trouble. <laughs> I was torn from it. <laughs> I thought they said this your set is one of the, the when you assisted to get into medical school. <laughs> this was the question they were asking. And that weekend we were supposed to have enlightenment. I was sweating. I just left that exam hall. Couldn't answer any question. Went to go and be praying. I was sweating. I had to catch my courage from within to continue facing the remaining exams. Because if that thing touched my image, I would have failed the rest. But there are many that have not been able to rise up because it was at that statement that shame covered them. I break that shame in the name of Jesus. Some people, previous comments from authority figures, you don't know anything. It has ringing in their heads. 
Say you, you can never write anything correctly. Why are you always talking like a dumb ass? Why do you speak anything? And that thing rings. So every time they stand in front of people, they start shaking. When they were young, growing up, you were young, you came out to present, your classmates started laughing at you. Since that time, anytime you stand to speak, before you open your mouth, you start shaking. I break that spirit of shame. You spirit of shame holding the destinies of God's people fall off in the name of Jesus. You are healed. Your consciousness of your redemption helps you break this thing. In Proverbs 28 verse 20 it says, the righteous are as bold as lions. In 1 Corinthians 6, 17, that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Imagine meditating on these things continuously and you stand with an image of yourself as being one spirit with God when you want to speak to people. Timidity disappears at the light of boldness, at the light of righteousness, consciousness, knowing that you have been redeemed. And do you know that people's lack of high value for themselves affects how they write? If you see yourself as a king, as a success, you will write with more dignity. If you see yourself as a failure, you write carelessly. It's an inherent thing. People don't know. We have a precious sister in church. Her writing is calligraphics on his own. If she writes, just leave it. Don't say you cancel something, you want to help her correct it. <laughs> if you touch your writing, you destroy it. She writes on the same line. Her writing is straight, beautiful, and no such font, but as her own font. One day, her classmate told her, if I'm your lecturer, I will never read what you write. You'll pass every time. And she's a doctor. I can be sure that when she passed through medical school. Because I asked her, when you're under pressure, do you write like this? <laughs> she said, this is how I write, sir. Then I realized that you are not writing anyhow because you're under pressure. It's a picture. And since your writing can affect how you do well in an exam, you need to change the image of who you are from within. So that you can start writing like, I don't want to disgrace myself for I'm a king. That, ah, if they read the king's letter, how will they be able to effect it? If they don't understand anything the king is writing. If you are not a doctor, write well. <laughs> I'm just joking. If you see my spiritual father's writing, my God. I'm still trying. <laughs> my writing is doctoral. <laughs> But I've passed all my exams and I don't used to write any inside exam. <laughs> my spiritual father's writing, my God. Beautiful. When you see such, you want to read it. You need this thing to succeed in exams. That before they look at what you wrote, just by the outline, by the way the thing is, like, ah, this person is a bright student. <sighs> right image of myself. Moses did not have a right image of himself. That thing did not allow him to stand up. But there's something God told him when he gave all the excuses. My writing is bad. I can't even talk. God said, go, I will be with you. That means entering every presentation, either it is a written or oral presentation that you need for your success in your academic endeavor, you must enter with the consciousness that God is with you. It gives you the right image of yourself. Number two, healing of dysfunctional body parts. Moses, go. He said, Sir, I stammer. I, 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 I stammer. God was not surprised too. God just said, who created the mouth? Who created the eyes? Who created the ears? Am I not the one? God is the one that creates the body parts that can give you problems in the area of presentation. Because some people who are suffering from dyslexia is a brain problem. You've not been able to read properly, you've not been able to write properly. It's a problem with some parts of the brain. It can be healed. 
Because if you were wondering when I talk about presentation skills, I was reading First Peter 2.24. Which one does it? Uh, is that there is healing for your dysfunctional body parts. All these uncoordinated movements that you have, shaking when you're in front of crowds, sometimes it's a brain problem. Anxiety disorders. In the name of Jesus, be healed. You stand in front of people and you have five minutes. Good My friend, I command that tongue loosed. I command that mouth healed. God is the creator of the mouth. Stand on God's word. Stop telling yourself you have dyslexia. Start calling yourself the healed of God. Start claiming the healing word of God. But me, I've spoken no. And now in the name of Jesus, you are healed. Testimony came to me of a young lady who was invited to church. The power of God fell. She was very mesmerized. So she has never seen it before. She has never fallen under power herself. So they said, are you a supernatural student? Then no. Say, okay, get the message, take it. Go and listen. <laughs> Somebody that was doing funny, funny before. The next service they saw her, she was very attentive. So they were wondering that, ah, you, how come that <laughs> you have changed between this time and now? What really happened until they heard the story? She was listening to one of the messages on this supernatural student telegram platform. She was lying down on her bed. I said, God is doing a surgery on somebody's brain now. Suddenly, her head became heavy and she fell down from her bed under power. Instant surgery. So it means that there are people that the problems they are having, they are body part problems. Their brains have so much issues, they cannot coordinate themselves in writing. Their brain has so much issues, they cannot coordinate themselves in speaking. Their speech centers have problems. In the name of Jesus, be healed. <laughs> Learn to speak God's words to your body. Speak against psychological problems. Speak against psychosocial problems. Speak against them. Don't accept them into your life. Number three. Deliverance from demonic oppressions. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. He has delivered us from the authority of darkness. Translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Ah, pastor, demonic oppression, presentation skill problem. Ah. <clears throat> there are evil spirits that have landed on some people's life that causes permanent confusion. What happened to Saul? Saul became irrational now because of an evil spirit. Is that not why they brought David to meet him? Every time the evil spirit lands on Saul, he will become irrational. He starts behaving like a madman. Behaving confused. They say, ah. Because in those days, please, I want you to know that they did not have the gift of discernment. It's not discernment they used to appreciate that an evil spirit has jumped on Saul. It's behavior. That means there was a confused behavior orchestrated by an evil spirit. I speak to somebody that is listening. This confusion that has been plaguing you, that comes upon you at the point of presentations in the name of just be destroyed. These evil spirits bring confusion. They bring easiness. Anxiety. They make a person's mind easy. All the times they are about to do something important. It must be cast out. And in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. Fall off that person's mind now. Let them go. Be loosed from your infirmity. Some of these evil spirits, you know how they gained entrance? For some people, when you were doing something and somebody shouted at you, Why are you slow? Pam! And they caught in the soul. And you kept hearing that thing. And an evil spirit jumped on it and has walked with that person since that time. Do you know that some people have been confused since they've been young? They cannot stand in front of anything successfully with a clear mind. It is an evil spirit. I command it, broken. Be broken. Since somebody, since the age of three, three, like that, you know, since as long as you can remember yourself, you've never had clarity of mind. I command that thing to be destroyed.
Some people, that evil spirit gained entrance into their lives when they had previous embarrassing occasions in public. Fainted in public. Stuttered once in public. From that moment, shaking, shaking every time. They became embarrassed and an evil spirit jumped on it. And since that time, anytime they want to represent, either in writing or speaking, they are not able to. I command that thing, that foul spirit, lose your hold in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Number four, what you need to solve this presentation skill problems. Utterance. Utterance. He said, when Stephen was speaking, Acts chapter 6, verse 10, they could not resist the spirit by which he spake. In Luke 21, verse 13, he said, it shall turn for your success. And he said, don't meditate. He said, I will speak through you, and I will give you a mouth and a wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to gain, say, nor resist. I speak over somebody that utterance in the name of Jesus. Utterance is that form of boldness that comes on you and shapens your heart into the place of readiness to speak, even when you don't have words to speak yet. Utterance is that form of boldness that comes on you and shapens your heart into the place of readiness to speak, even when you don't have words to speak yet. Your heart is ready. There's boldness. You feel like you already know what to say, yet you don't have what you want to say yet. That's utterance. When you speak with that boldness, it will always do something to your hearers. That's what happened with Stephen. As he was speaking, the Bible says he got to a point. They were transfixed. He was full of the Holy Spirit. He began to talk. 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 To talk. Ah, they were caught to their hearts. His speech provoked emotions from the people. It means that if you understand how to get utterance, you cannot be afraid of presentation. Because you already know that if that boldness can come on you, even when you don't know what to say, anytime you speak, it will always do something to the heart of the ears. The apostles were talking in Acts chapter 4. And one of the things I love is that, and the other says, these men, they are not educated. How come they are talking like this? But they are not educated. That means that you might not be the most read, but when you speak, you are the one who is most attended to. That's your portion from now. So they said they took note of them that they had been with Jesus. That means that utterance comes by impartation. Now I speak impartation for utterance of punch. Receive utterance in the name of Jesus. Be filled with utterance. Utterance makes the insensible sensible. And utterance comes on us and happens to us by the overwhelming of the Spirit. When the Spirit of God fills us up, I say, ah, but it's the overwhelming. I've been waiting. It never happens. No, you can get filled. Thank God for Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 19 that, says, that tells us, be filled with the Spirit. That means that we can do it by ourselves. He says, speaking to yourself in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in your heart. That means that a man can yield to the Holy Spirit to be filled. If you spend time in prayers, if you spend time in prayers, all chance will come on you. So always take time out before an exam. It can be just a day before you start preparing for the exam. Or you have finished preparing. It can just be a day, two days, three days that you give to just praying continuously. You can still revise in between spare time, but you just keep praying. What you are looking for is that form of boldness that holds your heart into the readiness to speak, even if you don't know what to say yet. Man, Speak in tongues for like 30 seconds. Man, take a brother. Raise that well of utterance up now. Begin to shout, I receive utterance now. I receive perpetual utterance for my presentations at whatever level. Receive utterance. 
number five is more of a wisdom solution. Practice. Practice. This involves a lot of diligence. Sometimes, just practicing your academic work goes a long way to solve these problems. Be diligent again, I say, to understand your causes. It helps with boldness. You are not bold when you don't know something. It doesn't mean that if you don't know it, you should lose your boldness. But at least, before you get to exam, at least, you can work on this area. When you get to an exam and it's like you don't know, still be bold. Pull it from your spirit. Don't ever fail an exam because you feel you don't know. Be bold at all times. God is with you. God is for you. Practice. God is not just about giving you success in this exam. Are you always going to go to exams without knowing things? No. That's not God's perfect will for you. It's not God's perfect plan. Be bold. Practice. It helps your boldness. Practice speaking. When you finish your presentation, speak. Say it. It goes a long way. Understand what you have presented. Say it. Understand these topics. Understand your schoolwork. Understand very well what you are about to go and present. Practice writing. Some of us need to just humble ourselves and get these 2D exercise books that we used to use when we were in primary school and then get a tutorial on how you can train yourself to write legibly and practice what you are seeing there continuously. It will shape your writing. You can retrain yourself to write properly. And while you are practicing, I want to encourage you to get support systems in people that can cheer you on as you develop. That if you are presenting and say, ah, wow, 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 that's really better. Not somebody that will laugh at you. That's better. Why not work on this? Why not work? People that are your cheerleaders that can help you. Say, wow, your writing is really improving. You are getting better. You are getting better. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you that from today, every presentation problems you have been suffering from, they are over. And whenever you are practicing your speaking, practicing your writing, practice it with the consciousness of the healing you have received. Don't see yourself as one with dyslexia anymore. Don't see yourself as one with a writing problem. Believe you have been healed. Many times we are praying for people. Maybe they are crippled or something, and you rebuke that spirit and you ask them to stand up. You, sometimes you don't help them every time. You just stand up and start running. Sometimes you see them, little, little. Then they start getting more strength. They start running. They start climbing the staircase. All the while believing they are healed. It's the same thing with writing. You are healed. Start practicing. It will be easier. It will become better. God has reset the brain. God has reset your brain. God has reset your body part, your hand, your muscles. Everything you need for proper coordination. I pray for you. From today, distinctions. From today, growth. Pray in other tongues if you miss. Labra hata haya. Yembre deve kete beleti ya kasapra diaba. Yembre deve kete lebre diya kasaka yaba. Yembre deve kete lebre diya takasa ya. Yembre deve kete lebre ni ataka ya. Yembre deve kete lebre ni meti ya tasaka yaba. Yembre deve kete lebre ni atiaga. Yembre deve kete lebre ni ni atasa. Yembre deve kete lebre ni akasa ya. Yabra daba tia katela mania. Yembre deve kete lebre ni atiata. In the name of Jesus, I decree every presentation problem that anyone has been facing is over. I speak healing over your body parts. I speak healing over your brain. I speak healing over your mouth. I speak healing over your bones. I speak healing over the muscles of your hands. In the name of Jesus. Shame is broken. Shame is broken. Fear is broken. Every way the enemy has been holding and paralyzing you with fear and with shame, I command it destroyed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you, and I look forward to hearing your great testimonies. You've been listening to a message brought to you by the Standing Church International. We believe you've been blessed by God's word and are set to experience miracles. If you have never made the decision to be saved and would like to receive Jesus into your life, please say the following words out loud. Lord Jesus, I confess you as Lord over my life. I believe that you died for me and that God raised you from the dead. I receive all that you made available for me through your death, burial, and resurrection. I declare right now that I am a child of God. I am 
free from sin, and I am the righteousness of God. Amen. Congratulations, you are now saved. We are so glad you made the decision to receive Christ today. If you would like to share your testimonies with us, you can contact us on our social media platforms, on Facebook at The Standing Church, and on Instagram at the underscore standing underscore church. You can also call us on 81 3477-3145 or visit our website at www.thestandingchurch.com God bless you.